the individual, the skier, the snowboarder who's out ranging around, triggers that avalanche from the load of their body weight on the snowpack. This glass sitting on top of this desk here, you would expect it to fracture out. The snowpack dynamic is very similar to that, sometimes having to make difficult decisions to not go. You know, in the face of this pleasure that people gain, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a drug during heavy storms when there's lots of wind, you know, creating that kind of force and load onto the snowpack, which ultimately causes it to fail. Slopes of the famous tourist ski destination Gulmag are considered to be iconic for snowboarders, skiers, and adventure enthusiasts. However, aimed at watch warnings, there are certain guidelines and protocols that need to be followed. In this episode of Beyond the Headlines, we spoke to the snow safety officer, Brian Newman, to know more about this. What kind of what kind of protocols we need to follow? What are the areas that that are no-go areas as far as the skis? A concern, let's hear him out. Avalanches are triggered by the persons who are caught in the avalanche. Avalanches don't strike inadvertently out of no place. That doesn't happen except for during heavy storms when there's lots of wind, you know, creating that kind of force and load onto the snowpack, which ultimately causes it to fail in the very same way that the individual, the skier, the snowboarder who's out ranging around triggers that avalanche from the load of their body weight on the snowpack, causes it to fail. And this kind of fracturing glass, if I were to hit this glass sitting on top of this desk here, you would expect it to fracture out. The snowpack dynamic is very similar to that in that it fractures, that fracture propagates out. And then due to the slope angle itself, the avalanche comes down the mountain. Uh, no. Next is very important to understand that there is a distinction a very clear distinction that we have to educate our readers about because in India it is a novel idea to have a ski area. There is a ski area in this green zone indicated here by this dotted line which is managed by the ski patrol as a ski resort. By management we undertake a risk management plan which is very broad in its attempt to manage the avalanche risk inside of that ski area. And this is done throughout the world. <clears throat> and in fact, this avalanche mitigation is very successful in achieving relative safety from avalanches inside the ski area. So then the distinction has to be made between inside the ski area and outside the ski area. Now, outside the ski area, what we refer to oftenly in this lexicon of skiing, we call this the backcountry. These are the areas that are outside of this managed ski area, which have had no avalanche mitigation done at all. We call that terrain wild. The risk of avalanches in those areas is as it would be in the undisturbed environment of the mountains. What happens is people coming from all over whether it's local skiers who are Kashmiri, who are used to living in the mountains, many of them become ski guides. And then there are foreigners who have a great deal of experience, whether they are free riders themselves, that is, they have a lot of experience, or some of them are also guides, international mountain guides. They want to leave this area that is managed to go out into this wild terrain, and it's significant to ask why. Why do they do that? Clearly, we are asserting that there's greater risk in those areas. Why would they want to do that? Because they have invested the time to gain the skills to manage this risk responsibly. And they do that with great effect for many, many years without ever having an avalanche problem or incident or accident in their experience. But those who do not respect that learning process <laughs> and have those skills and they don't respect how to uh, move on this terrain in a respectful manner, they will trigger those avalanches. And furthermore, they are almost always the ones who are then caught in the avalanche and perhaps killed. We say managing the terrain. So when someone is skiing or snowboarding through this kind of wild terrain, knowing that the risk of avalanches are there and that they are the ones that will trigger it, 
they need to move carefully on that terrain. One way, very simply put, is to stay above where they could be caught by the avalanches. It's common sense, right? By staying on top of a ridge, it would be difficult for the avalanche to climb up and get them. They might still be able to trigger it, but they wouldn't be pulled away as easily. It also begs common sense to know that if you had a group that is moving through this terrain, it would be best to go one at a time. This way, you're decreasing the amount of load on 70 kilograms. The, the amount of load that's being put onto that snowpack, testing it at any one time, would be limited to just one person. Furthermore, in the untimely event that that person triggered an avalanche and unfortunately were caught in that avalanche, if all the other group members were set in a position to be security watching that one individual, there would be less people caught in the avalanche and more likely that that rescue would be affected quickly by the group members. You see, all of this goes into the preparation for responsible travel in this kind of wild terrain. If it is not done responsibly, then as what happened yesterday, as I'm learning as I conduct this investigation of the accident, is that yesterday's event was a case where there were eight individuals in one group who were on the slope all at the same time. This is not a black and white thing. This is, this is clearly a very dangerous thing to do, to put eight individuals on the slope at the same time. What we provide here through what's called an avalanche center. This is a common phenomenon and a resource in other parts of the world. Where I come from in the United States and live in Europe, we have this public service. In this case, I developed this in 2007, recognizing when I started here working for the government that it would be necessary to provide this public information about, well, what does the expert believe is the risk should the person decide to leave the ski area? What is the risk of triggering avalanches today and every day? That advisory is updated to provide them with that information. It happened to be very, very accurate to not only the type of avalanche that would be triggered, a large destructive avalanche, but also where it would be triggered in this elevation bandwidth on that aspect, north, northeast aspect. All of those things were described in that advisory. So we go to great lengths to give people the tools to make good decisions. However, in this case, very, very poor decisions were made. And yet in the news, what we see is avalanche strikes Gomarg ski area. That is inaccurate. And no one has ever died inside this ski area. But yet through the news, and if you look back through it, even the uh, unfortunate avalanche accident that happened last year where two Polish skiers were killed. If you look at the news reports, wildly inaccurate. From the investigation, which is also freely available on this same Avalanche Center website. I'll give you that web page. It is Golmarg AC or Avalanche Center dot IN, which is supported by the Jammu and Kashmir Department of Tourism. It's a nonprofit organization just meant to be a public service and give people this information. We have mapped out all of this terrain during summer periods to look at where each of the potential avalanche paths are, and there are numerous. This terrain itself here could occupy 10 ski areas in another place. It's huge terrain. So the process of performing avalanche mitigation in this area is a very, very deliberate process, which has to ensure that the risk of triggering avalanches in this area is very, very low. So for that reason, the idea of just simply expanding that avalanche mitigation process into outer lying terrain is a very large undertaking process that can't just be done serendipitously. When you talk to these players, they have their own you know, uh, definitions, how they should be upscaled, what, what government should do. Mm. How you as an expert mm. see all this? Okay, so that's, that's a addressing a much broader question, right? Because as we can see by looking out the window today, there are a lot of different categories of winter users here. Snowboarders, skiers, cross-country skiers, ski mountaineers, all sorts of individuals of varying levels 
of professional skill level are enjoying the use of Gomar. And that's the same way this ski resort operates on a daily basis. We can say all of them would benefit by addressing uh, some improvement in the infrastructure of this ski area. All of them would benefit from that. Addressing which priorities are there have been done in the past by myself in end of the season reports. Um, but then again, this is a government operation. So it's the government's responsibility to address those priorities and decide to fund them and move forward with those projects. I have 15 members. These are, you know, very capable in terms of their their, their sporting level. Huh? They're at a very high expert level of being able to ski and snowboard. They are local and international guides. They are local and international free riders. They are the ski patrol themselves. This community comes together in the event that, as I mentioned, we can never guarantee that avalanches won't happen in any of this terrain, okay? But all of them undertake the responsibility of having this training, of having the skill set, <clears throat> not only to manage the terrain properly, but also to be available in the instant that it's required that the unfortunate avalanche takes place. And they all work together as a community to make sure that rescue is effected. And I believe that that's important to honor that in terms of our endeavor to create a community here that respects the mountains and respects what needs to be done uh, even in the event that the unfortunate uh, accident occurs. The investigation is provided again transparently back onto that Gomar Avalanche Center website so that anybody can read it. Folks can learn from those incidents. Again learning those skills, seeing what was done incorrectly. Everybody learns from zero at some point. So that can benefit this community that I'm speaking of and broader community. It can benefit, you know, general public of understanding a bit more of what are avalanches and how they function, that they are not random events, that they're triggered by individuals typically. <clears throat> it also provides, I believe, some important information to the families who've lost a member, right, to this accident. In their case, they have some understanding as to what happened so that they can maybe achieve some closure there. Perhaps the most important for me in terms of our work here is shedding light onto some of this ignorance as to what caused the accident so that people do realize that there are measures that can be taken to move around and enjoy this backcountry skiing outside of the ski area and to do it safely as long as the work is done in advance to gain those skills and then sometimes having to make difficult decisions to not go. You know, in the face of this pleasure that people gain, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a drug to watch some of these people and their passion for this kind of powder skiing and powder uh, snowboarding. Uh, and it really is a thrill. But in the face of that, in recognizing the risks and the risks change hour to hour, day to day. But by having those skills and, you know, eliminating this ignorance, People make the decision to say, actually, you know what, today, visibility is poor. We're not going to go outside of the ski area. In the last 13 years, uh, would you recall any incident that has actually given you goosebumps and it has actually... I wouldn't, I wouldn't characterize it as giving me goosebumps, but there have been plenty of different types of incidents that have occurred in this region. Um, coming back to that advisory, there's one in 2010 where a storm and the snowpack all were adding up to a very, very dangerous event during a strong storm that was hitting Golmark. And seeing that forecast, my advisory at that time said, not only do we have the chance of natural avalanches happening, why? Because of very strong winds combined with lots of new snow. Again, that's gonna be load, just like you're a load, you're a load. Together you achieve even more load together. When you're moving around the slope, then that's a dynamic load, even more dangerous. These trigger points, are in different places on the slope under different circumstances with the snowpack. In that instance, in 2010, my advice in the advisory was the entire Congdori Plateau should be abandoned and moved away from because of the risk of avalanches traveling greater than their normal tendency and going past tree line, past Congdori and entering that tree line. This is a major event. <clears throat> 
everyone within the ski area and the cable car corporation and the various uh what do we call them um stakeholders they heeded that advice and moved away during that storm for at least 24 hours on that date unfortunately the military at the base next door did not heed that advice and they were out doing training during that storm at treeline still a great distance i mean we're at treeline here we're very far away from you know the steeper slopes nonetheless a large avalanche came out of the killenmarg region hit their training party buried numerous soldiers in that event and 13 of them died <clears throat> the ski patrol assisted them on that day along with the tourism department for that rescue recovery there's an example of an event where we have to respect this profound power in these avalanches but it gives us indicators as long as we follow those uh, those indicators and take the necessary steps.